Record. There and there. What's this? Copies are coming. Let's just wait until that happens. Can I just leave my camera? And then this. <laughs> this is a whole production, Mia. <laughs> You can translate can the I, whole time. Uh, actually, do you have any questions for her? Because you can come in for <laughs> one or two questions. Look at her. Let's see. This is why. No, no. Like it hurts you. I'll just wait until they come. And what's good is that this this will be picking up the whole time. Um, noise canceling all of the basic info and then this i'm gonna have to do some work maybe but this one's gonna be on instagram oh shit did you repost on instagram we tagged you oh you gotta find this is like the <laughs> like a magician <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> that's hilarious Yep. Who wants it? Who did I just give Wi Fi to? You? No, no, I gave it to her. It says complete on mine. <laughs> Night, day, guys. Uh, so sign out, sign out of elite. <laughs> <laughs> so what I put as the, the, the topic was, um, can you show, can you show me what did I put as the, set, the topic again? Cause I'm going to ask you based at, as type. So basically about athlete development, we'll talk a little bit about that. Like what's the major thing you see being like important for athletes to develop themselves with? Where are they lacking? Topic, Here. Athlete development. How Croatian sells and could improve us combining our experience to bring solutions to So she said like a robot. Did you hear any of that? She said how, how Croatia how excels. Yeah. Etc. So, like, that's a moment for you to say kind of what you're feeling like you want to do with your thing. Because I'll explain what we're doing with the lead volley combine. I'll just lead us through everything. All right. Um, maybe you can use your influence to say to him, like, can you turn down the music a little bit? Can I get it? They would. I'm not sure about that. I would do it. They they do it for me, but Zini, uh prosite. Is it possible to turn the music down for ten minutes just a little? Uh Samo Mala. I do it I do it in cafes and I have meetings and they usually do it. They usually I know, I know. <laughs> I get lucky. <laughs> What did you say? Nothing. I'm not doing anything. It's not a podcast. We're going to get ice cream. Cool. Okay. Ready. Hey, I need you to, to literally, right when it starts, like send them out. <laughs> There's a lot of crap. Oh my god, hvala lijepo. Lijepa. Just making sure. Get a little scared. Uh, ja idem ča. Hvala uh, vam i vidimo se u Lori. Može, hvala, hvala. Dobro nam došli u Lori. I just realized that that's the guy that was waiting on yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In my normal clothes. Um, Okay, we're good. Make sure that it goes live. 
Can you check to see that it's going? Uh, let me go out really quick and go back in. I want to make sure. Got that. It's not easy with the left hand. There we go. That's what it should have done the first time. Are we good? Check. One, two, one, two. We're going to wait a little bit. Is it live? Good. Cool. So I'm here with Mia Yerko. Nice to have you here. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, I could give your bio, but I'm going to let you do it instead. Just say a little bit about where you're from. Okay. Hi, my name is Mia. You know that already. I'm Croatian. I'm, uh, my family is from Split, but currently I'm living in Shkibani, Croatia. For many years, I've been uh, vice captain of a national team. And um, what else? Uh, 20 years pro, almost 20 mm -hmm. years. Um, We're in the similar boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still enjoying volleyball and uh, kind of we're in this together and exploring new ways to impact our society here. So that's a little bit about me. No. I think I can I can talk much longer, but yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> and a little bit about me is just uh, we, or Mia and I, we met in Korea. Yes. Back in like 2011 was yeah. the first time we were both playing there. And then uh, I came to visit once and then I came back and hit you up. Finally, yeah. it's hard to find you. You always like disappear. <laughs> You'll be like different numbers, Instagram, everything. <laughs> I'm an enigma, but uh, yeah. it was weird because like the, First time you came to Croatia, we kind of met up. We met up like randomly on the street or something like that, right? But do you know that? Do you remember that we met and we had coffee right there across yeah, the street right the there, first time? Yes, I remember that. So and when I came like, back, I knew this place. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was randomly though. It was totally random, and I was like, when when we finished our drink and I went back home, I was thinking like, it's so cool that Ryan came because Split was not so famous at the time, mm. like as a tourist tourist place. Like I was thinking, like it's amazing that this guy came all 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 the way here and mm. like in, it's in, he's enjoying his time and stuff like that. I, I, think I love the balcony. Yeah, but like I was thinking, <laughs> it's awesome. I'm so, I'm addicted to the balcons yeah. actually. Eight years in Serbia, and so now it'll probably be I don't know, 16 years in Croatia. Uh, Who knows? Let's hope. Yeah. Let's hope. So, okay, so we're on today because we want to talk about just like the state of things for volleyball. Yeah. We've both been around for a while. We don't know everything, but we've seen plenty and we've learned a lot. I think we have some similarities in terms of like, we both are fighters and like whatever we want, we're going to go for that. Yeah. Nobody's going to knock us off of that kind of path. And uh, I bring that same kind of mentality to the business for elite. Uh, the way I think about it is that I would like to do things for the players and the players only. Yeah. At the end of the day, I have their backs and that's all that matters. And education and all the things that come with like, um, you know, doing something different. Yeah. So people saying, no, 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 you can't do it that way. You have to do it this yeah. way or that's not possible. Or you can't be an athlete and do X, Y, Z. Yeah. But if you're great at being an athlete, you can do whatever the hell you want to be. I, no, I totally do. agree with you because like, I think we, we don't do enough in supporting like people who, who, who are aware of this. I don't. I think we feel too much alone in this, mm -hmm. and I don't think we connect enough and and support each other enough that ha like to further this and to find more people like it. Because myself, I think it's really important for me. For me myself, it was really important to get my education because it was something that grounded me and it made me actually better in 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 playing volleyball because it was something my education and the degree that I got. It, it, the, the knowledge that I got from there and all the connections really helped me stay grounded in my professional career. And I think it's a big thing, yeah. especially when at a certain point you become famous and you start like, okay, earning a lot more than you used to. I think it's an important factor for like the, the to live your life the healthy way and just to further like to grow and in general like that. Yeah. And you, so you decided, so we're talking about athlete development and part of what we, we were having some talks with our rookies over the last, actually yesterday, we had two meetings with rookies. It was voluntary, whoever wanted to come in. And we had about eight of our rookies, I think total. And one of the things that kept came, coming up is like Americans don't understand that when you move from American volleyball to professional volleyball, 
you literally are you're a business yeah and so what you guys understand from here and from brazil or yeah. maybe not so much asia because they really do coddle you yeah, they they, yeah so I, i would say in south america and europe it's really special places because you have to be an individual yeah. and you have to approach it with a business mentality and thinking i have to be special yeah, yeah. and i can't take any handouts yeah that's true it's more like tennis kind of mentality like yeah. It's it's a cutthroat business like NFL, right? Mm -hmm. You need to show you're the best to be to be recognized as someone, some player of value. Especially when you come from countries that are not so well known for volleyball. Yeah, people take longer to recognize you, recognize your talent, take longer to acknowledge you, and um, it's hard. But like the way of life is in Croatia, I think. From that point of view, it helps us mm -hmm. because, like, everything is a little bit more crude yeah. in a certain way yeah, yeah. than like states or uh, mm -hmm. okay, Asia not because Asia is really, really cutthroat. But this whole part is really like they shelter them a lot. Exactly. But we know this. But yeah. generally, Asia is really cutthroat yeah. in general. But, yeah. So I think from that point of view, like we're a little bit in front, but like. We don't recognize I think as, as people from Balkans, we tend to overlook the fact that uh, connections, other people is important mm -hmm. in your life and also education and connecting on that different level, mm -hmm. not only business level, right? Yeah. So we kind of neglect that part. Yeah. I think this is, this is so key, like an athlete development. You want to think like there's never any right or wrong. There's just always a balance and you have to find that balance. Every individual is different, but sport in general is different. So like you play in Turkey or you play in France or you play in Germany, you play in Poland, you play in Italy, they're all different, right? Yes, Russia, yes. Japan, Brazil, yeah. it's all different. Yeah. And so you have to be equipped yes. to also be able to say like, okay, I'm going to adjust to this. Sure. You know, here I need to ask for my money and I need to do these things that I wouldn't do yeah. there. I don't need yeah. to, I shouldn't do it because if I do, I'm going to get canned like exactly. this. Um, exactly. One of the things that I was saying to my players, and this is something I briefly want to touch on about like player de athlete development in the, the, just the world of amateur or let's say high level sport. So you can include American volleyball in that because at the top, top of NCAA, you have strong volleyball. Yeah. And so I was telling our Americans, Martine and I, and we we're just saying like, you have to look at this as like when you can't seek or you can't wait for feedback. You can't wait for people to do everything for you, uh, tell you when you should ease off of volleyball, tell you when you should eat this, what you should do with this, what coach you should get for that. Because nobody, they're expecting you to come prepackaged, yeah. right? You come, you do what you do, and they don't care if you're a rookie. You're going to have to do what that 30-year-old player who's been there forever does too. Be better. Exactly. Yeah. And so like, my my question to you is you decided early what, what age to go to cal oh first i uh, when i was uh, 15 i decided to leave home mm -hmm. so i went to live with my grandma it's like 12 hours away uh, where's that well it's in pula today it's less ah, pula, okay. but before there was like a yeah. old road and no connections so like you had you were driving between 10 and yeah, 12 hours I can imagine. To get there. it's by italy yeah so and, uh, and that year, when I started to play uh, more more actively for a national team, uh, Cal tried to recruit me run, uh, one, after one world championship, and we established contact, but I wasn't really aware, because we didn't have, a, there was less, much less internet then, no cell phones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, We're dating ourselves now, I'm like, I'm like, yep. AOL well, dial up, uh, baby. That was brand new. Dial up was like <laughs> super new. Was and um, anyway, um, we we established contact, and I didn't actually realize it. It was uh, Berkeley because they they went they kept saying they're like University of California, Cal, mm, California. You yeah. know, it it's so known to uh, for Americans for you in US yeah. that they didn't realize like for us it's like. I have no yeah, idea. What where school is that? <laughs> and then if you do get on the internet, which is hard to do, yeah, you're going to see University of California, California, this, it's yeah, like a million like of them. UCLA, Carolina, <laughs> Santa Barbara, whatever. And it was like, 
and anyway, when the actual uh, box came, mm -hmm. which also is a second miracle because uh, post the office post. in Croatia today is great, but before it was like unreliable, yeah. unreliable so unreliable. <laughs> And uh, I really did Berkeley, and I mean, Berkeley is a fantastic school. And for me to be able to to go and play volleyball, something that I love to do, plus try to get this kind of this level of education was like a jackpot. That was for me a level of going to Harvard. Yeah. Right. So I just went with it. I went with my gut, and I just decided to go. It was super hard mm -hmm. because, like. People kept telling me that I was throwing my career away and stuff, but I kept thinking about it. It's like, why shouldn't I get my education? I'm young enough, and if it's meant to be, uh, I, in 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 terms of like developing like my career uh, going off and like taking off and mm -hmm. and doing good, it's it, it will it will be you know like mm -hmm. it will happen. And I just went with it, and I had challenging but great experience and i think it shaped me shaped me as a position player a, a left side like a, a outside hitter who receives i mean i think it gave me the edge for later like it gave me the open mindedness to be able to like experience different leagues and different clubs with a certain attitude like to, to learn from each everyone you know like to get it like okay in Italy, we play like this. So what can I get from here? Like, let me improve on this and this. In Asia, they play like this. So, like, I approach every single club with opportunity to learn something. And I think that was one of the biggest assets for me. But at the same time, I was, I had this killer instinct that I didn't want to show anyone yeah. that they're better than me. So, yeah. like, I was talented enough to be better. So, like, that kept me going, right? Mm -hmm. But you know how it is. If you're not the best, then you're just second. And that's, yeah, exactly. That's you're it. an afterthought yeah, at yeah, that point. Yeah, they don't think about you anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just say, what would be some of the major areas that you think athletes these days are failing with their own development? Choices, development, think, we're yeah, talking. I think there are two things. Like either uh, athletes focus solely on the sport without other facets of, of their life mm -hmm. and they're just too much inside one thing like okay nutrition sports training like crazy that's all valid mm -hmm. but you need balance in your life you need wide wide uh, variety of things to be able to like grow because like as a young athlete with so much energy and so much potential you have to realize that's not your only potential mm -hmm. yep and the most common mistake is just, you know, sticking with just one thing. Mm -hmm. You realize, okay, I'm good at this, so I'm just gonna keep at it. You don't risk nothing outside of it. You don't risk, okay, maybe, I don't know, I wanna go to med school. Yeah. You know, here people, it's automatically a canceled thought. In what I like about the US, it gives you the opportunity to explore these ideas. Yeah. People are open, like, open to you enough to tell you okay you might you know you might want to consider it but like be careful about like this this and this yeah here you get just get shut down so people just mm -hmm. tend to stick to one thing and on the other hand like if you want to really do something do something with your life like go for a degree go for a doctorate or something you just cancel sports mm -hmm. because people tend to think okay you cannot do both but why don't do three things yeah. do four yeah, this is the box I, I mean, talked about earlier. Don't be in that box. Don't be in that box. Like you can do, you can be more than just a mother. You can be more than just a doctor. Mm -hmm. You can be so many things in the life. Like just enjoy life. Just enjoy yourself, your own talents. God gave you these talents. Mm -hmm. So this is the most common mistake that I see young athletes and young people do. And it's mostly because they are, I think they're afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. What do you but think it, about their network too, though, around them? Uh, Family, coaches, whatever. It's too narrow, right? I mean, they rely on one or two people the most. And it's not long, but it's just like being able to talk to someone, even if it's a complete stranger sometimes, can give you a totally different outlook on life. Yeah. And just being like this willingness to ask, 
you need to be willing to ask something that interests you and without any fear of being rejected neglected or like shut down yeah i think it's important thing there is no shame in asking and there is no shame in trying and failing mm -hmm. at least if you believe in something you should do it i mean and you should try and find people who can help you with it in yeah. any way possible like maybe not in materialistic way maybe like just as an idea as a conversation as just give you their time i think it's valuable enough for a young person to just see there are more options in life not yeah. just you know one thing and i i just want to say right now um first of all about the doctor thing yeah. i think that it's incredible i watched uh ogana silva from team usa she went for her doctor oh, she's her. now a doctor uh, we have a young opposite who just uh, actually, she had a great match last night, by the way, Michaela <laughs> Shields. I'm just going to throw that in there. Congrats, Silverato, 22 points last night. But she wants to be a doctor. She's with us for a couple of years. She's just going to give this a whirl and then go from there. Yeah. Not limit herself and say, you know what? I have to start med school yeah. right now. And that's all I can do, even though she already played in college. Yeah. The second thing that I wanted to say is more on her story on beyond athletic and what you're talking about you're more than just your sport you're more than just this little box that people and you yourself put yourself yeah, in that's true. and so listen to mia's episode on beyond athletic uh we can put that link to her episode in the podcast and go from there we have my trusty sidekick yeah. over here <laughs> saying yes yes we'll do it eating like hot chocolate or something anyways i want to transition that looks so good um i want to transition to Croatia. Yeah. Talk about a little bit. What's on your mind, on your heart about Croatia and Croatia volleyball right now? Well, uh, I love, first, I love that I met you in Croatia because you have so many great ideas about, especially because you're so focused on young people and young athletes. And I think uh, from that, like, it's also my point of view that I believe that we neglect these young, young, young athletes to the point where when they're grown people like grown athletes like 20 years old 21 years old if they're not developed enough they they cannot they cannot be like they cannot go and sign contracts they mm -hmm. cannot be good enough in, in yeah. volleyball right so what Chris is so small but yet so like you can find so much talent but what pains me is that the level of, of training and stuff, it just declines every year, right? And, and athletes are suffering because of it. We don't give them enough opportunities, enough options, enough. We don't push to them enough not volleyball knowledge and they will absorb every, anything, right? Mm -hmm. We don't like, in a way we, we are professional. We, we are, I'm still a professional athlete. You mm -hmm. are also, and we, we try to give back. At least I, I would like, love to try to give back what, yeah. what I've known from Asia, from US. I played in Russia, Italy. That's all different worlds of volleyball. And I think it's not a small pool of knowledge that we have here. Not at all. And um, it, I would love to have an opportunity to give back, to show these, these people, I mean, to show them and to tell them what's all the possibilities in the world. Because you can literally become whoever you want yep. like you like I went from a prospect to one of the best players in the world but just because I work hard and I found great great coaches that were willing to teach me and I demanded them to teach me yeah. I demanded from them I wanted to do it I wanted to go to Asia and play their play their style mm -hmm. and re be a receiver at like 6'3 and play their style yeah. everyone told me it's impossible everyone told me it's impossible to go to school and play and play i did it i mean everything is it's impossible. a constant yeah, thing in sports to say thing. no yeah. you can't do this because do because they're businesses yeah. right yeah. so they're always trying to keep you narrowly focused on what they ultimately want from you and yeah. unless you're like you were naturally you're intrinsically were like no i feel like this i'm gonna go with my gut yeah. feeling i'm gonna trust it everybody else it's valid what you're saying. Okay, thank you. But I'm going to go this way and I'm just going to see. Yeah, I need to see for yeah. myself because I'm feeling differently than how, you, how you're how you describing my, mm -hmm. me, me to myself. Yeah, right? exactly. And uh, when I was 33 years old, everyone was like, oh, you need to 
take it slow, you'll become old, blah, blah, blah. That, that was the year I played 100, 100 official yeah. games in a year. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't feel old and I don't feel slow. Yeah. But thank you, thank you for your opinion, but like, look at this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's different. Yeah. I, uh, this is, I love this that you me. say that this is, this is how it is though. Like people are always going to try to mold you and your thinking to what they want from you yeah. or what they're gonna, their limits are going to be what they mirror for and you. For sure. And it's always this, their fear, uh, other people fears and other people limits are good. I don't say I don't say they're gonna limit you on purpose. No, it's just how they transmit this to you because it's their own thoughts, their yeah. own fears, their own limits. If you don't feel that way, you don't feel that way. Period. If you wanna go and run like 40 40k, you know, like, yeah, uh, just do it. Like who cares, you know? Like stuff like that, you know, random things. It's just like my whole life has been involved, uh, evolve, evolving around like other people's ideas because I come from a culture where family opinion of a family matters more than your own. Yeah, it's so. I've strong. learned that like, being in the yeah, Balkans. Yeah, it's so traditional, so strong. But I have to say, like, eighty percent of the time, I don't feel that way, and I didn't do it, mm -hmm. and somehow everything turned out to be. Perfectly yeah. fine, you know, and I va value the whole my whole experience even more because how I felt I did it, and I did it respecting everyone. Yep. Because I do it with so much. You love can do it with class. For, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do it with so much love for volleyball and respect for everyone that I don't know how like it can go wrong, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, and I, I think so. Just talking a little bit uh, to, to end off on that and go into Lee Volley Combine and some of the things that we are thinking about for the next yeah. year. And this is a crazy time, but it's also not a time to be idle, right? Yeah. Um, it's uh, the best thing I could say is this is like imagine being restricted from playing volleyball because you can't find a club or you're injured. Yeah. It's no different. It's just another little obstacle. And if you prepare during this time, you can come back and Even surprise better. everybody. Yeah. yeah. Surprise yourself, surprise yeah. everybody. So one of the last things I want to say on what you're talking about. So you talk about the level is declining for coaching and, and kind of like the outlook. Uh, and it's not just in Croatia. It was like that for, yeah. for us in Serbia and, and in many places. But that's why I'm in this region is because I feel like athletes need to understand you have a world outside of the world that you're in and all you have to do is tap into it if you're afraid of it listen to that fear lean into it and try it to understand was that fear actually real or was it not at all like it, it, what it what i thought it would be yeah. right because our instinctual fear is going to tell us just be prepared yeah. yeah but we should still do it and yeah. a lot of people think fear is like just stop Stop, don't do nothing. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not at all. It's yeah. lean into it, go, yeah. seek out. Just okay. open the door. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, Elite Volley Combine is basically, I'll just explain it for everybody. Um, basically, what we started doing is I love the tours. Um, I'll give a shout out to people who and businesses who do tours for volleyball and do these exposure things. However, in my opinion, you could level up. I think what, what I prefer in my daily life, uh, Martin's learning this, the uh, the immersed way but i feel like you can always become a better version every minute every hour every time you do something you have an opportunity to get better and so with the combine what i was thinking is why not mix exposure with actual teaching yeah. of basic foundational skills but also advanced tips and tricks yeah, that those. people don't know and then put them in an environment where they can actually use those things, train, be seen by coaches, whether they're from America, Asia, Europe, it does not matter. Meet these other athletes, mingle with them, get to know, like right now we're sitting next to young athletes who are from America, Croatia. And this is great because you give an opportunity to these athletes to actually expand and start talking about what we're talking about. The other side to the combine is literally like sitting in classroom type environments, learning about why uh, mental health is important, why emotional health, social health, like how you communicate with others and how you communicate with yourself. So then packaging all of that into one event and then going into what Mia and I were talking about earlier, essentially it's like, how can we do that here in Europe? Buddy, it's okay, babe. I know, I cried too, it's so stressful. <laughs> um, 
how can we do that here in Europe and really give back? And so what we're doing is basically trying to bring you athletes into our world and say, join us, hit us up, talk to us, consume this information. Yeah. And so why don't you talk about a little bit like where you are thinking you would like to go because you're in a transitional phase. You can still play, but you can also still do other things because For sure. we always can. I was always, uh, right? I was always interested to share my knowledge and I think what you're doing is fantastic. And in this way, I, I found that what I feel uh, is needed in this time is this uh, uh, how to help young athletes, even though those that are currently in clubs, is uh, creating some kind of uh, atmosphere in training. Actually, we are talking about training mm -hmm. and creating an atmosphere semi professional, but also bringing in like real pros and bringing in like talented Croatian girls that will train with us and really work on our skills. Mm -hmm. Like if it's a stationary, stationary work, just technique or really like volleyball and some advanced stuff. I think uh, that part of volleyball training is really lacking mm -hmm. generally in this part of, uh, in Europe in general, but in this part of the world, especially Croatia. Yeah. Serbia less, but I, but I just seen you don't have enough time yeah. on the highest level to actually address this. And then, uh, as the op in the opposite direction for young players, they just don't have enough resources yep. to do it. So what happens is young players lack this kind of knowledge, not because it's on purpose. It's just because or no one, uh, no one can teach them this, or mm -hmm. there's just not enough time for them to have a gym time or experience enough to see experience enough player to kind of pick up moves on yeah. or just speak to a good enough coach yeah. who can teach them. Or in my case, like one of the last things I would add to that, because I love all four of those, yeah. but the, the other thing is like, I remember eight years in Serbia yeah. and finally I started working with some young athletes, but the biggest hurdle was who are you and why do you want to help me? Yeah, It was like this idea that people don't just help you. Yeah, And I'm like, yeah. no, that's like what I do. Yeah. Like, this is what I love to do. And it was really frustrating for me because I was just like, how do I figure out this problem? How do I help, but yeah. not seem like somebody who's going to take advantage of yeah, them? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the biggest hurdle, I think in general in this part, like on the Balkans. Mm -hmm. uh, I think like we just need to help uh, people realize, raise awareness that on this level, you realize that when you love something and you do something with love, it kind of loves you back. Yes. And well, I love just, that. You know, like, so the more I give to volleyball, the more go volleyball gives to me. Mm -hmm. And I just like wanna people want people to understand that this is the feeling from which you can only grow. Mm -hmm. And this is the feeling that we try to teach other young kids like this is the the point we're starting from yeah because like when you try to teach someone mm -hmm. like that from this point of view it kind of you give back but it's better for everyone right mm -hmm. they're better off the national volleyball is better off exactly. the national team is better off the global volleyball is yeah. better off because you never know what new talent will come from yeah. And it's just this kind of mindset that made me who I am. And it, this kind of mindset, I think also for you, like I found coaches that were so great to me, like great yeah. human beings that really helped me when I was like zero, you know? Mm -hmm. And I really believe it's because of this, because I really love volleyball so much and I love playing it. And I had so much passion for it that I just found people that, yeah. Share this with me right? because you didn't hold that inside exactly. you also exactly. gave it like out I, and by doing it. that you became a beacon the people who thought like that yeah. and resonated the same exactly. energy could be attracted exactly. to you and i truly believe that that's yeah. the and, and i agree with you people are kind of skeptical mm -hmm. when when you show up and be like oh i want to teach you but like why yeah yeah i get it but yeah. because it's not so common mm -hmm. it's really rare and you should be aware of that, like yeah, how good definitely. this is, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing, it's a great thing. Yeah. And, but I, it, it, it definitely comes to a little getting used to, but 
love always comes true, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and this is why I'm so persistent with it. Yeah. So, okay, so I'm really glad you came on today. I'm really, I mean, appreciative and super grateful for everything yes. you're doing. I mean, you're training with me and my ladies yeah. with the lead volley. But I, I enjoy it so much. Yeah. yeah and uh, I'm looking forward to just like moving forward and keep taking steps and just being as persistent. I mean, I'm looking for my residency. You know that. Yeah. I do. I, if I'm already in the system in Croatia, like, this is going to be home. Uh, I implore. So basically, I really genuinely ask all of you athletes out there that if something that she said, or I said, or the both of us said resonates with you, like if it feels good, like what you hear, and you're, you're thinking like, man, I felt like that inside, or I'm interested in that lean into that, like talk to us, talk to any of the ladies that are affiliated with our agency, Definitely. talk with Mia, talk with anybody just know that we're never going to be the kind of people that are just like trying to take you into some trap. Neither it's of us. It's always a choice. Yeah, it's always a choice. Yeah. Well, well, for me, it was, was a way of life. I chose it. And if you don't choose it, it's fine. But like, if you do choose it, then just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Just take everything you can from it and give it what, what, what you can. I mean, if you give it your 100%, you will get 100% back for sure. No. And it's only for yourself, right? everything else we share yeah yeah well thank you so much yeah, for being thank on you. thank you all right you guys so if you enjoyed this make sure you share it with some friends thanks for listening ciao Bye. don't worry i check every time too i'm all mm. you guys understand much yeah were you translating Trying, no. yeah. <sighs> Wait. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll also, I'll get a a friend to translate. I think this is good to take. Oh. Uh, I think it was great. Yeah, it was really good. We, we just go random. Uh, just, I like freestyle. Yeah, though. me too. If you have like a little structure, yeah, it's I think because it's like best. it's you can not possibly plan it. Mm. Like I, I can talk for days. Yeah, and I <laughs> think sometimes you, you, yeah, you have to go with the flow because yeah. you. That's when something will just spark and you'll yeah. be able to go off on that yeah, yeah. that little tangent. Let's see. Description. You liked it, Martin. It sounded good. Cool. Mm -hmm. I liked what was being said, but it's because it's delayed on me. So it's too late. So interesting. Because yeah. I go home, no, no one says. Yeah. No, they're like, you're so weird. You're like, oh. I'm gonna put this on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Guess, but apparently, I'm neither. It's not a, it's not a bad thing. It's, yeah. it's not a bad thing. It's not so like me in the middle is so good. It's so good, yeah. Okay, okay. At least I'm both. At least I'm both. Here, I'm probably American the most there. Europeans, so, oh, you know. like, yeah. You're so European. Yeah, I am. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like, yeah, I live there all, like, more than I live here. Europe is more my home than here. So, Oh wow! You, you can tell how you matured, but you're like still the same. Yeah. <laughs> oh.